Have you ever gone outside on a beautiful star-studded night to look out into the galaxies and to, to look across the Milky Way, see the shooting stars and the stars that are flickering millions and millions of miles away and thought to yourself, what a magnificent miracle this is. But greater than all of that is you the ultimate miracle of creation. I want to talk to you today about don't stop the miracle. Stay with me. I'll be right back. Finding and knowing God is a faith walk. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Our hope lies in the coming Messiah who will establish God's peaceful kingdom on earth. This is Faith Walk with Ron Susak. Dr. Ron is an evangelist committed to encourage and equip your faith walk as we pass through these turbulent end-time days awaiting that soon-coming kingdom. Here again is Ron Susak. I want to take you back as we begin these few moments together all the way back to the beginning. How did this whole thing originate? It's recorded. It's recorded for you and me in the book of Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to read it for you because it's such a marvelous text. It tells you so much about yourself that you need to know, that I need to know about myself. Genesis chapter 1, we're going to begin in verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Pause there. The seventh day, God rested. What does that mean? He was weary from all the labor? No, no. The word rest means completion, wholeness. There's nothing to be added. What a marvelous thing. That's why he calls you and me to take the seventh day, always, a day, every week, to rest before him. Now, when he created the universe, did you, did you capture the, the shift in emphasis on the word good? When God created the material universe, the galaxies, the animals, the birds, the fish, the creeping things, he said, it's good. But when he created Adam and Eve, your 
forefathers, he said, of them. It's very good. Why? Because he created Adam, Adam and Eve superior to all other creation. That probably is what got Satan, who was then Lucifer, the chief of the angels, unhinged to think that God had created something above him. By the way, not only did God create you and me to be in his image, to be in his image means we are the highest thing God ever created and ever will create. You are created in God's image. What does that mean? You are able to think and reason and govern and make decisions and have values that animals cannot have. They only have instinct. Now, listen to me carefully. I know we've heard things and seen movies like The Horse Whisperer. Well, I've done some amateurish horse training, and I spent a lot of hours learning about training horses, and, and I worked with horses. I thoroughly enjoyed that. But I want you to know there is no such thing as a mystical horse whisperer. Forget it. It is a discipline that can be practiced by anyone, and the horse will respond that way. <laughs> My point? You are superior to everything that God has ever created. That's a high and holy and sacred position we must be very careful to protect and walk wisely in that decision. But God created Adam and Eve primarily for two reasons that emerge in that text. Number one, God created Adam and Eve, you as well, because you're a descendant of Adam and Eve. God created us for relationship. A relationship with himself and a relationship with one another. Adam and Eve enjoyed each other. But in the cool of the day, they would walk in the garden with their Creator, and they're communing with God as they are communing with one another. That relationship is extremely important and significant, not only to Adam and Eve, but to you. Why? Because our psychological well-being, our emotional well-being, our physiological well-being, has much to do with the quality of our relationships. Where there are sour relationships, bad things happen in the body as well as in the spirit and in your mind. Where there are broken relationships, something is fractured in you as well as in the other person, and that can lead to real serious damage. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Those of us who try to be wise about health are careful about vitamins and what we take, what we put in our body, what we don't put in our bodies. That's wise. That's good. But I don't care how healthy you are from vitamins. If your relationships are out of joint for too long of a season, you may have a breakdown. We, we, we're talking about everything from strokes to heart attacks to nervous breakdowns. You name it. Why? Because you are putting a tremendous pressure, or another person is imposing a pressure upon your system that fights disease, your immune system. It's all interrelated. Relationship is significant, critically significant. Oh, yeah, I remember an ad that I just got a kick out of. Laugh my head off every time I saw it. A man is getting on his horse, and this woman is pleading with him, Oh, don't go, don't go. And he says, I am a loner. And a loner has got to be alone. And he gallops away as she's going, Oh, oh. And all of a sudden, there's a sign at the end of the, where he's galloping, and, and he hits that sign and falls off his horse. And she, Oh, no. I laughed my head off. And I'll tell you why. You think you're a loner? You're going to hit your head on the sign. You weren't created to be a loner. That is about as self-oriented and, and self-destructive as you can get. Take the word to a wise. I'm serious about that. Relationship is absolutely essential by divine design. God not only created us for relationship, 
He created Adam and Eve and the human race for reproduction. What did he say? Multiply and fill the earth. Ah, we're not even close to filling the earth, and we have people wanting to shut it down. We, they, the, there are plots to reduce the population. Why? Oh, we're not going to have enough fuel. We're not going to have enough food. We've got this problem. No, my friend, don't play God. You stop playing God. You're surrendering to the demons when you talk that way. I don't care if you're a scientist. I don't care who you are. You're playing games with the demons when you talk that way. You're misleading people, and you'll answer to the Creator who said, Fill the earth. I'm in the people business. And if God says that, He has a way of taking care of every person on this earth. Do you know why most droughts occur? Because of war. Because we ruin people's ability to plant and grow crops. And so, yes, there's a drought. Yes, most of what we suffer is induced by mankind. And you say, well, no, I can show you where it happened and there wasn't a war. Well, let me tell you something. Now, listen to me. You get a nation that obeys God, honors and worships God and obeys Him in their ethics, their morals, and their laws. I'm here to tell you they'll not see a drought. Study your Bible. Go to the Old Testament. Story after story will show you that. God brings vegetation in the desert. God will turn vegetation into a desert by the behavior of the government, the spiritual leaders, and the people. Why? Because we're violating. We're, we don't want a relationship with God. We want to do our own thing, and we're really messing it up big time. God made us to replenish the earth by, by reproduction. Why? Because God is building a people unto himself. Those who reject that have that choice. They can deny God. They can ignore God. They can just live unto themselves. They will not be in that coming kingdom. It will be you who take God seriously, who, as God rested on the seventh day, and the word rest doesn't mean that he was fatigued, it means that everything was now complete. Work hard for six days and then take the seventh day to sit back and rest in the completion of what you did. It's now complete. I rest and I now give myself in a fellowship relationship with God. That's what the Sabbath is for. Whatever day you choose for that, that's what it's for. Ah, oh, my friend, how wise is the person who not only just mechanically goes to church and sits through a boring service because this is the routine. You've seen it so many times. You know what comes next. You know when Mrs. So-and-so is going to sneeze, when Mr. So-and-so is going to get up and leave and then come back. You, you know all of those routines. Ah, uh, that's not church. Whether you're alone or whether you're with a gathering of people, we are to be people who really seek a relationship with God. Yes, in a service, but please, develop a relationship with God day by day. When you get alone with Him in His Word, absorb His Word, study His words and His ways, know how to relate to Him, that's why you were created. For this relationship, and to reproduce, and nothing is greater than to be a parent, a forefather. The moment you have a child, you become a forefather, either for good or evil. And you'll answer for one or the other. The moment you have a child, you're a forefather, automatically. You are, gonna, you are going to guide the tra trajectory of a child's life, either for good or evil. That's a serious matter. My brother-in-law, Buddy King, years ago, sang in a group called The Magnificent Men. They were good, really good. They were packing the Apollo Theater and theaters up and down the East Coast until in the late 60s and early 70s, a 
Riots came and that ended all of that. Eventually, Buddy really came to the Lord. He went to a retreat when he came to the Lord and he wanted to really straighten out his life in every possible way. And while there, uh, he wrote, uh, he, he developed an album and he wrote some, some of the music. It's original. I know that you can't see the picture very well, but I want you to have this in your home because when you see the picture, you'll see a pond and you'll see a bench. And that's where Buddy sat to do a lot of fellowshipping and meditating with God as he was getting to know God again. And while he was there, he wrote a powerful song that I would love to see become the, the, the anthem of the pro-life movement. It's called Don't Stop the Miracle. The album is called The Joy of My Heart. And I want to send you a thank you copy for those of you who will help me get these messages out to the world through television and streaming and podcast. I need your help. And uh, anyone giving a gift in Canada or America, I'm going to send you a thank you gift copy of this CD, and you'll hear the song. We're going to play it for you right now. Don't stop the miracle. Here's my wife's brother, Buddy King. Beyond the bounds of Eden's holy grounds On and on throughout the seasons Woman and man lie down With their feelings Face to face with the meaning Then thoughtlessly they make a fatal choice but faced with a miracle, even the sun bows down and concedes that the eyes of a child still hold the brightest promise. I'm begging you, don't stop. The miracle When you hold the future in your hands Behold the future inside of you God knows that all you are Is thriving there Open up your eyes It's a lie and as it was from the beginning, it's now and ever shall be a miracle. Budding rose on which the raindrops fall Within the master's garden represents the call to all Who conceive the innocent of heaven To keep and to cherish all his children I'm begging you, don't stop the miracle When you hold the future in your hands Behold the future inside of you God knows that all you are is thrive Alive, and as it was from the beginning, it's now and ever shall be a miracle. I'm begging you, don't stop 
the miracle I'm begging you don't stop Did you know that every January for 50 years, January the 22nd of every year, men and women by the tens of thousands have challenged the brutal weather, icy cold winds, to march in D.C. to preserve life? What a remarkable thing. And that's why I wanted to take time on this program to talk to you about God's original design and plan for you and your life. And I really hope that you'll be encouraged and that you will help us. And let me send you this thank you gift album by Buddy titled The Joy of My Heart. But the song I want you to hear is Don't Stop the Miracle. Now, I know there are tough arguments that people raise regarding what you're going to do with a child when you're pregnant. There are those who say, it's my body, it's my rights. No, it's not your body. You didn't create you. And because you're not the creator, you don't establish the values and the purpose. The creator does. And so you are, if when you become a believer, your body is bought with the blood of Christ. You're not your own. I'm not my own. We have an obligation to use our bodies for the purpose of God. And I want to encourage you to take that into strong consideration when you think about a child. Also, I hear people say, well, it's a decision between a, a woman and a doctor. No, it's not. I could give you a lot of reasons why it's not, but let me just stay on this level. It's a decision between you and God. And you need to seek the wisdom of a true Bible-oriented minister who will pray with you and simply help you think through your decision, your choice. Because I have friends who made the decision that they were advised to make, thinking they could put the weight of the decision on the doctor, and they regretted it the rest of their lives. I'm urging you to seek the right counsel, the right advice. Then there are those who say, I can't afford a child. No, but you can afford adopting your child out. There are many people who will do all they can to help you. So please, be very wise. Dan's going to tell you again how you can get a copy of Buddy's song, don't stop the miracle. God knows that all you are is thriving there. Open up your eyes, it's alive. And as it was from the beginning, it's now and ever shall be. The song, Don't Stop the Miracle, by Buddy King, is featured on his album, The Joy of My Heart. Now, as a way of saying thank you for standing with us in our ministry, we'd like to send you a copy of Buddy's CD when you partner with us by way of a financial gift of any amount. This offer is for any of our viewers in the United States and Canada, and all gifts are tax deductible. Join our team by going to faithwalk.org and clicking on Partner with us. Isn't that a magnificent song? I hope you get it in your home and 
play it over and over again and play it for friends. Don't stop the miracle. Let's go back to the beginning again. How did all of this begin? I'm going to read it for you again, not the whole text, but just this part. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. My friend, if you stopped the miracle, and you're laden with fear and guilt, and wish that you could do it all over again, let's clear the record right now. I'm going to give you a prayer to help you begin a whole new life. God is not going to condemn you to hell for what you did. What condemns us to hell is when we don't confess and repent and get right with God. I'm going to give you a simple prayer that I want you to pray after me, but think this through and make it your prayer. Dear God, on the basis that Jesus died for me, I'm trusting your forgiveness for all my sins. I'm asking you for the power to live committed to you, obedient to your will, from now until I meet you in heaven. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Get in touch with me if you pray that prayer. Stand with me. Help me reach out to the world with these messages. And let me send Buddy's album to your home. My friend, the name Emmanuel, that's God's name given also to his son Jesus Christ, means God is with you. God bless you. This has been Faith Walk with best-selling author, pastor, and evangelist, Ron Susek. The song, Don't Stop the Miracle by Buddy King is featured on his album, The Joy of My Heart. Now, as a way of saying thank you for standing with us in our ministry, we'd like to send you a copy of Buddy's CD when you partner with us by way of a financial gift of any amount. This offer is for any of our viewers in the United States and Canada, and all gifts are tax deductible. Join our team by going to faithwalk.org and clicking on Partner with Us. Well, thanks for being with us today, and we hope you'll join us again next week as we find courage for the journey in our Faith Walk.